2018 Chevy Tahoe fuel injector misfire code P0206 so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove all the connectors to provide for more room to access the intake manifold bolts then I'm going to remove the fuel pump relay and the fuse so in this video portion we're watching now you see that we're looking at uh, the, the intake manifold, uh, the breather, the filter, and there's our fuse box. I'm going to remove the fuse box lid and then remove uh, the fuel pump relay. Then I'm going to take off that that breather so here we have the fuel pump relay uh, labeled with tape and this one I have removed the air breather assembly by pushing down on or pushing up on one side and pushing down on the other side and those clamps release the lip and you can pull both off so it's one on each side also have these uh, C clamps that I need to remove use a screwdriver flathead screwdriver to remove both then I need to remove all of these uh, plugs and connectors from the alternator from uh, every clip that you see you need to remove them to get you access to the intake manifold bolts now I'm going to show you where exactly the bolts are located so there should be five bolts on each side. I'm pointing directly to those bolts. They are a 10 millimeter. You need an, ex an extension. That's a, a six inch extension. Once you remove all those bolts, you need to also make sure you remove either the negative or positive on your battery so your vehicle won't start. Here I'm showing you that the length of that is about 24 inches but you have an overhang like a 12 inch overhang so it's going to be difficult to remove this intake manifold straight up so you have to remove it up maybe two three inches and then forward about 12 inches and then it can come out here I have removed those 10 bolts those 10 millimeter bolts and I've removed it, the intake manifold, and it is upside down in my garage. Those are the 10, I mean, five uh, bolts on one side and five on the other side. Inspect your um, gaskets at this time. This is a pre pretty new vehicle, 2018, so I don't feel that the gaskets need to re be replaced at this time. They are roughly 50 bucks uh, from AutoZone. Here I'm going back to look inside. We still have this dampener in there that's covering up the fuel rails. The dampener needs to be removed. Now that sound dampener is removed and I have exposed the fuel lines. Uh, that's a 17 millimeter uh, wrench I'm holding. Uh, but those four bolts that I'm pointing to on the passenger side of fuel rail are 13 millimeter. So you need to remove those four 13 millimeter bolts. And then you need to use a 17 millimeter wrench to disconnect those uh, fuel lines that you see that form like a 
cross member. Now the uh, fuel rail has been removed. The passenger side fuel rail. Uh, they're extremely dirty. You can see here. Uh, that's the one that was uh, stopped up on this fuel rail. So I had a misfire for a number six. Also you saw in the previous portion that I've stuck, uh, put uh, racks in each one of those intake holes. There should be eight of them. Now this is on the back of my truck and I'm looking at um, and inspecting the fuel rail. I accidentally took one out that did not need to be taken out. That's the only one that needs to be removed. That was bad. That is the one I purchased from GM, about $135. It comes with everything you need. It also has excess extra uh, gaskets that go into the bottom of the injector. What I'm pointing to there are the two top gaskets. If you do remove injector, you have to put two top gaskets up there. This is GM box that contains, like I said, a fuel injector and all of those gaskets. Make sure you put those shop uh, rags in those holes because you don't want any trash to fall in to uh, those holes. <coughs> so that was uh, the passenger side fuel rail. Took me roughly a day to do that, um, to get everything off and to get it cleaned up. Now I'm inside of the motor. I got my foot inside and I want to show you where the fuel injectors are going to go. Those holes, a bad design in my opinion. It's a lot of dirt and dust that gets in there. I use a shop vac uh, to clean out the excess gunk because once you pull out the fuel injector stuff can fall down in there so be very careful. So this is the, the driver's side fuel injector rail. I just removed it. The driver's side is a little more difficult to get out because you have those fuel lines. Those fuel lines, you have to use a special tool to get the fuel line off. That's the fuel line. It goes there. Also remove the connectors to those uh, injectors. Now what I'm showing you now is the, the little cheap stuff from Northern Tool that would not work. I spent several hours trying to get those uh, connectors loose, the fuel line connectors. Um, I also had these. They didn't work either. I think that was a 3 8 uh, pipe. So I used that connect, uh, disconnect, quick disconnect. I ended up going to AutoZone and getting a metal one. And the metal one worked within five minutes. So don't waste your time with those plastic uh, dis quick con disconnects from um, Northern Tool. Get you a, a metal one from AutoZone. It worked wonders. Here I'm going to show you how I actually clean the injectors once I uh, pull them out of the truck. Those are the two uh, bottom seals that need to be replaced on all four of those injectors once you pull them out. I clean the ends, uh, use a wire brush. I'm showing you here that once you pull that injector out of the rail, you're going to have to replace those two top seals. You might have to purchase extra ones from um, a GM and they're about $19 for a pack of four.
So for that one rail, you would need uh, eight bottom seals and eight top seals if you remove each one of those injectors. I found a, um, a tube and I got some cardboard and I placed the rails on the cardboard. I connected them to a battery charger and you see my little tube that I'm going to squirt some carb cleaner into it. Once I have that carb cleaner into it, I'm going to use an air compressor to push using maybe 50 to 60 pounds of pressure to push that carb cleaner through. This is going to help clean out anything that's inside of those tips. Then I'm going to look at the spray pattern to make sure none of them are clogged. If one is clogged, I will then remove and replace that injector. Here I'm going to show you uh, uh, the side view. I just sprayed my uh, carb cleaner inside. You can see it in that tube. It's bubbling. I'm going to put my air chuck, turn on the, and I'm spraying it out. So all four look like they're spraying pretty evenly. It doesn't look like any of them need to be replaced. I did this same thing on the passenger side fuel rail and one of them didn't work. It was uh, injector six. It wouldn't spray anything. Now I've uh, put the rail back in and I'm showing you the cross members for the fuel line that are going to go and they're going to connect the right rail to the left rail. Now GM um, suggested, strongly suggested that you have to uh, put by brand new cross members uh, to put on. That's the old ones. Uh, they suggested that they would not work anymore. So I'm glad I left them um, connected. So now I use the new ones and I replaced them back in. Um, they said something about it would help seal better if you use new ones. If you use the old ones, they cannot guarantee it won't leak. So I used my 17 millimeter um, and reassembled just like I disassembled. Now I, I clean up my um, intake manifold gaskets. And I'm going to put them back in there once I remove those rags. That's my sound dampener. It's a big thick pad. Um, put that back in the way it's supposed to go on the internet a guy used one hand to put to take it out so I'm gonna try his one hand method where he slides the hand and arm under the intake manifold he brings it back and then he slides his arm remember we have like a 12 inch uh, recess to get that back in uh, these are the torque specifications a four foot per pound the first pass follow that sequence boat one boat two boat three boat four five and six and so on follow that that sequence at first tighten it down one pass four foot per pound then come back and do it again at seven foot per pound I didn't have a book for that I found that on the internet also so I tighten all the boats down for the intake manifold I reconnected um, all of those uh, plugs that I removed and I'm going to see if I can start it. Remember the, uh, the, the gas that was all in the line when you open the lines gas went everywhere. I used shop vac and, and shop rags to pull it all up. So I try to start it several uh, tries and it won't start so I make sure I have my relays and my fuses in which I do then I go back uh, I think I tried it maybe four times and it wouldn't start so now I'm on the fifth time trying and trying and it hasn't caught yet and then finally um, it says uh, low battery so I have a little worry now, so I try it one more time, and uh, it eventually catches. So 
once it catches it uh it runs for a while then it takes you to 